Alvaster and welcome to our April segment of Council Comments. If you are new to our video segments each month, we sit down with some of our city leadership and they just kind of share with us what went on at the council meetings, give it to us maybe in terms that we can understand. And today we are joining Scott Brakefield. You are Ward 6, right? Yes. yes. Also our city council president. So yes. you got a big job. Uh, I guess. I guess so. I would say so. I would say so. <laughs> Trying to keep order amongst, yeah. amongst the yeah. team. So, yeah. So, well, fun, um, so we are in April already, yes. which is crazy. We're it is. about to get into summer. Yep. Sports. I'm sure you're crazy with busy with sports right Three now. Three boys uh, ranging from football to golf to baseball. So, yes, all over the place. All over the place. Yes. Um, our our uh, city agendas for the last couple meetings, mm -hmm. which you can look on the city website and look at those agendas from the meetings. Um, they weren't super full, but there was some really good yeah. points that we wanted to hit on yep. so let's just dive right into okay. to those and talk to me about some things that went on I know there was something on there about the audit yeah so each year we uh, hire an independent accounting firm to come in and kind of do a complete audit uh, look where we are financially make sure that our policies and procedures that we have in place from a financial standpoint are in line with the expectations uh, and that we're doing everything right so uh, a company called BMSS was our independent auditor okay. uh, this time around and they came in and gave a presentation to the council and a nice thick book that if anybody wants to kind of take a look <laughs> at it and, and be bored to tears almost. Now, there's a lot of good information yeah. in there. Um, it's uh, available uh, at, at City Hall, but okay. uh, the unique thing about it is, is in governmental auditing, um, what you get back is an unqualified opinion. So that sounds bad, that sounds negative, but actually it is the best opinion that you can get from, from an independent auditor. So they uh, praised, uh, throughout the audit, they praised us for having um, you know, good uh, approach to our financial spending, mm -hmm. uh, our conservative nature, our savings account, our you know, kind of rainy day account that we have, uh, but also praised the work of our internal team. John Haggard, uh, who handles kind of our, is kind of operating as our CFO uh -huh. of the city, uh, does a tremendous job for us. So uh, we're grateful for John, his team, all the work that he does, and then also the mayor. You know, uh, uh, Mayor Hanlon has an accounting background, mm -hmm. so it was one of her big pushes when she came into office is to make sure that we were very strong in that area. So to get an unqualified opinion is, is a very good opinion, even though the name sounds a little sound little a weird. Crazy. So yeah. yeah, so we were excited about it. Uh, so hopefully um, our revenues will stay strong. We'll continue to shop Alabaster first. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we still struggle with... Uh, the, the trend to get away from shopping at brick and mortar and shopping online. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you can, try to try to shop get brick and mortar. Yeah, yes. support your local businesses. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, finances, you did have a mid-year budget review, yes. right? Yep. So um, about this time each year, our fiscal year runs from October through you know the end of September. Um, so each time, each year, uh, about this time of year, uh, the mayor, her team, John Haggard, will come mm -hmm. to us and give us kind of a projection of how we're trending, okay. uh, which department may be a little over, which department may be a little under, if there's any unforeseen uh, expenses that we need to adjust and make uh, line item adjustments. So we went through that at a work session and approved those in April. Our, approved those in March actually mm -hmm. um, so those mid-year budget adjustments the good news is, is we're projecting uh, right along the lines where we where we thought we would be uh, so that is a testament for everybody you know shopping alabaster first right. uh, but um, had some minor adjustments here and there some department expenses that may not have been anticipated mm -hmm. so we were able to make some adjustments there not many and uh, everything looked very positive uh, for the rest of the year always good to kind of do a mid-year check, make sure yes. we're exactly. staying the course, right? Yes, exactly. Yep. Following our guidelines. Absolutely. So. Okay, now we had talked with another council member. I can't remember who it was at the time, but street lights are being replaced, right? Yes. All over the All city. All over. Tell so us about the progress. So a few months ago, we worked with Alabama Power. Uh, Alabama Power made a proposal to us to basically give over ownership because what people don't understand is that once a street light goes up on a major highway mm -hmm. or in a neighborhood, the city assumes that expense. Right. So we pay the monthly bill, the monthly power bill. 
Alabama Power came to us with a proposal to change all the street lights over to LED lights and then to give all the ownership of those street lights over to them. Mm -hmm. uh, their proposal basically came out as a wash, you know, what we were exp uh, expensing for street lights versus what they were going to ask us to pay them for street lights. So, uh, we agreed to that principle, um, and so far they have, you've probably seen them at the major uh, shopping centers, mm -hmm. um, you know, at uh, the Walmart shopping center, at the Promenade, those have all been changed out. A lot of our major intersections have been changed out. Uh, you'll notice because it's a different style of light, it's yes. a lot brighter. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, we do run into some problems with the construction on 65. Uh, they will tend to knock out power and cut lines. So for all those lights, if you see them out, it isn't that they're changing. It's probably construction's gotten them. Yeah. But right now what they're doing is they're moving through all of our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you come home one night or you see, you notice that the lights are a little bit brighter. It is the new uh, LEDs that are going in around the city. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's exciting. It's a, uh, it'll be something different. It'll be a, a change. We've, you know, we've, we've already heard from some people that, you know, they like the old lights because these were too bright. You know, so I like the LED. Yeah. We've been kind of going through as we're driving at night, going, have yep. those been changed yet? Yeah. So you can out, definitely so. notice uh, they are definitely yeah. a lot brighter. Well, I so. think that's a really cool, yeah. cool thing for our city. Yeah. Another awesome thing that I'm extremely excited about. I have four-year-old twins, and we love. Playgrounds. playgrounds and we have some really great playgrounds around yes. the city but one specifically is the municipal park playground yes. it's it's an older playground but it is a great park it is it's a great it's going to be updated yes uh so uh, our parks and rec director tim ham came gave us a presentation to enhance the playground features there at municipal park uh with some new playground uh, equipment and stuff so um, during his presentation, he just kind of talked about the, the old, out-of-date equipment that was mm -hmm. there and the need to, to kind of spruce it up. We have a ton of traffic at Municipal because yes. soccer, you know, the majority of our soccer games are up there and soccer practices are up there at Municipal Park. And uh, it turns it, soccer's really kind of our biggest sport we run mm -hmm. because we run two seasons. We have more, right. more people uh, participate in soccer. So it's a very uh, busy park up there. So it was exciting for us to see this proposal and approve it. So we're we're anxious for Tim to get that equipment in and get it installed and, and get our kids uh, able to enjoy it. Awesome. So, we yeah. love Tim. He does a great job. Tim does a great job. <laughs> Parks and Rec, it's that time of year right now where everything's in bloom, everything's growing. Yes. Um, but like our Buck Creek Trail, our walking pass at Veterans Park, uh, if you're not getting out to enjoy a, a grandkid or a kid's game, you can definitely get out and enjoy, you know, because they do a great job with the trails and, and the uh, walking trails and stuff. So uh, hopefully everybody's taking full advantage of, uh, of so. everything in Alabaster. If not, they're waiting until the pollen washes well, away and then they're getting yeah. out. So if the weatherman, later. Yeah, if the weatherman <laughs> would just send showers like every three days to knock right. it down, it would be great. I agree with so. you. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get James Fan on that for <laughs> exactly. us, okay? Uh, something we talked about with Russell Betzel in our last yep. um, segment was the Board of Education yes. appointments. There was a spot that was going to be available, mm -hmm. and there has been a new appointment to the Board of Education as well, right? Yes. So, Misty Johnson is now uh, on our Alabaster City Schools Board of Education. Uh, she is taking a seat vacated by Miss Linda Church. Okay. Uh, Miss Church was one of our original appointees. Uh, she has done an absolute fab fabulous job, but she had reached a point in, in her her life that they wanted to kind of retire to the lake. Mm -hmm. So if you can't, if you don't live within the city limits of Alabaster, you can't serve on the Alabaster City uh, Schools Board of Education. So she let me know a few months ago that her house would be going up for sale. Uh, she sold her house and is enjoying life down on the lake. Uh, so, but through our last round of interviews, uh, when we appointed Jamia Williams, uh, Misty Johnson was a very strong candidate. Okay. And so we kind of held on to her and asked her, like, hey, if this happens, would you be interested in still serving? Uh, because it's a two-year, instead of a five-year, she's just serving out the rest of uh, okay. Ms. Church's two-year appointment. Okay. So Misty has had two kids go through uh, our school program, uh, our schools and all of our athletic programs, and her and her husband, Gary, are, they love Thompson. Yeah. And so we're excited to have her on the board. Uh, and then now what we're doing is we're going through the interview process for uh, another place. Um, each year, for those of you who don't know, each year we appoint somebody new or somebody to the school board and they serve five year staggered terms. So uh, this year's term is up for Dr. John Myrick. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dr. Myrick is interested in continuing serving. So he is one of the five candidates that we are interviewing for his seat. Uh, and we'll make that appointment uh, next Monday and then they will actually start serving on the board in June. 
So, okay. Yeah. So Lots a lot of busy on. stuff going on. Yes, yeah. school is coming to an end yeah. and summer is upon us. So And the school system fun. just announced that they will be doing their big move this summer. You know, not from yes. the, to the new high school was great, but now they're moving intermediate school to the uh, middle school and middle school to the old high school. So uh, I, I was reading in the Alabash Reporter the other day mm -hmm. that uh, that has been approved. So that's exciting, especially for the kids. It is. No, no offense to Thompson Intermediate School, but I went through Thompson Intermediate School, so, so it's a little I. dated. Yeah, yeah. It's a little dated, so it's exciting to get all the, the all that transition taken care of. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what's to come with all of that. It's yeah. going to be really exciting. Exciting times, for sure. All right. You have a wonderful summer. Thank you for joining us. Guys, please join us next month for another Council Comments brought to you by the City of Alabaster.